Hey everybody, <clears throat> it's time once again for Quantum Spirituality. I'm Derek Day, in case you don't know that, but uh, let me go ahead and do a couple of quick shares here, and let me try to adjust this just a little bit. There we go, and I'm going to do some sharing, because sharing is caring, right? I want to get this out far and wide so we're going to share it to three chord live and then we'll share it also to my public page to Derek Day Multimedia and then we're going to go on ahead and light this candle so once again it is time for quantum spirituality and uh where we take a look at spirituality through the lens of quantum mechanics and i really love where i am theologically this is something that just gives me great joy and great peace because i'm at a point now where i'm really beginning to understand how spirituality works now, this is not to say that I have all the answers, because even if, even if I were to understand, I mean, to, to really be into quantum mechanics, I still wouldn't understand it. Uh, Richard Feynman, the great physicist, once said that if you think you understand quantum physics, you really don't. And you could, you could make the same case for spirituality, that if you think you understand spirituality, you really don't. All of it is subject to interpretation. All of it is subject to observation. All of it is subject to situations, circumstances, conditions. All of these things color <clears throat> how we see things, right? So uh, hang on for a second. I'm going to look here because ah, my sister is on. Hey, Sandy, how you doing? Um, can't read anything with all these glasses, but, you know, <laughs> anyway... Uh, today, I want to talk about power, about power, because power seems to be the thing that people really crave today. And it's ironic, because the truth of the matter is <clears throat> that we all have power. Understand this that your physical makeup is the same substance as suns, stars. We are literally star people. This is why we are the light of the world and that we, are cons we consist of life-giving salts, potassium, magnesium, and sodium, that these salts are, are life, so we are the light of the world and we are the salt of the earth. This is all humanity, not just the frozen chosen, y'all. That's the one thing that we need to get past. All of humanity is the exact representation of creation. You are a creator. You're part of the creative makeup. So anyway, power is this thing that we all crave. Everybody wants power. I mean, right now in this political season, we have people that are craving power and they are willing to lie, cheat, and steal to get power. Everybody wants this. But we all have it. And here's the thing. There is really no difference between destructive power and creative power. Power is power. Energy is energy. There's no such thing as good energy or evil energy. That, that's not, it's either energy or power properly applied or improperly applied. Let me give you an example. <clears throat> I had talked a couple of weeks ago about weak nuclear force and strong nuclear force and how weak nuclear force is that which gives forth radioactive decay or how a 
or radioactive material breaks down. But the strong nuclear force is that which holds the nucleus of an atom together. It, it holds the protons and the neutrons and all of the subatomic or sub subsumatomic particles. It holds them all together. And, and so the strong nuclear force is where we get fusion. That when you begin to fuse multiple hydrogen atoms together to get variations of helium atoms, and this creates energy. And this is the holy grail of physics, of man or man, um, human understood physics, that we want to know how to harness this fusion so that we can have a perpetual energy source. Because here's the thing, the suns, the stars, they have energy. And this energy is largely built on the strong nuclear force and that basically you have a perpetual store of atoms that are being fused together to release energy. So the difference between a star, which in most cases is a life-giving heavenly body, and a nuclear bomb, there's not much difference between the two. In other words, when, when nuclear bombs go off, it, it is said that they give off a luminance or light equal to or greater than the magnitude of the sun. Which is why, I mean, it, it's light that is so powerful that it's destructive. Now, there is destructive or what could be used as construct or destructive light in the form of lasers, which is light amplified by the stimulated emission of radiation, in case you wonder what laser actually means. Uh, and this light concentrated, it can be focused into a beam, and this beam can be used either destructively to destroy things as a weapon, or it can be used constructively. Uh, like, for example, uh, I, when, when my, my kids were born, my, my wife had uh, the, what you call the C-section, and the doctor used a laser to cauterize and seal the wound. Okay, so um, that's constructive. But when a nuclear bomb goes off, it is a scattered light that is powerful like a laser. It is destructive, literally destructive light. And, and so we all have this power. The question is, do you want to use this power to give life, to give warmth, to give something that basically that benefits all of humanity? Or do you want to have the kind of power that cuts down humanity? And the interesting thing about this is that this power that cuts down humanity, that when it happens, it leaves a residue. Now, I believe that positive power also leaves a residue. And, and that residue can be seen in, in trees growing and plants growing and uh, animals thriving in the wilderness and all of these things that depend on light. And so so this th there is a residue that can be seen. Matter of fact, a lot of us who are of the fairer hue, <laughs> that we get a tan from sun. And that tan is a residue. It's a residue. It's evidence that the sun has kissed our skin. But likewise, a, a nuclear weapon, when it goes off, it leaves a radiation burn. And that's the evidence that you've been exposed to radiation. And why is all of this important? Because it's how you wield the power once you discover it. The problem that humanity has is that it seeks constantly seeks, constantly searches, constantly goes after that which it already has. If you understood the power that you have, the energy that you wield right now, you wouldn't go chasing after 
power. Instead, you would try to figure out how to manifest the power that you have. Now, one of the things that happens with humanity is that we get things twisted. And I'm going to tell you the, the word wicked. Let's, let's start with that for a second. Because wickedness is often thought to be evil. And it's not. It's like the same etymological root as wicker, like as in wicker furniture. And everybody loves wicker furniture. You know, I, I think so anyway. And it's beautiful. It, you, you take this rattan or whatever it, whatever um, uh, type of fiber that you're able to uh, uh, procure and you weave it into patterns that are structural, that they are able to sustain weight and, and they're able to... Uh, uh, to, to endure some pressure. Wickedness has the same etymological root as wicker. It's wicker, like it's twisted. You, you follow what I'm saying? Basically, wickedness is improperly twisted energy. It's not witchcraft or anything like that. It's not anything evil. It's not anything nasty. It's not anything. It's just twisted, distorted, perverted. And, and, and we have to understand that in order to really express things in a God kind of way. And see, this is why I'm really big on this I am God thing now. And you are God. Because once you understand your divinity, you are less likely to pollute, pervert, distort, or twist the power that you have. When we harness our power for the greater good of humanity, this is when innovation happens. This is when imagination is revealed. This is where inventiveness and artisticness, creativity comes from. See, the thing is, power can either create or power can destroy. When a nuclear weapon is discharged, it sets off a chain reaction a chain of events that happens quickly. It, it happens rapidly. And the change is so quick. It is so sudden and it's so powerful. This power is, is exercised in a very rapid fashion and in a very concentrated fashion. And so because of that, it is destructive. That's the point of it. That's the point of a nuclear bomb is that it's destructive. Now, you could take the same type of energy and you could use it to power a nuclear submarine or a nuclear aircraft carrier. Do you know what's interesting about nuclear submarines and nuclear aircraft carriers? Do you know how often they have to be refueled? It's like once every 20 years. And the reality is it could probably go Further, the problem is, is that you have this decay that happens within the reactor core and that decay has to be dealt with, but it, it's still capable of producing power. This power is the same type of power. Now, it, there's one small difference because the reactor in nuclear ships is what they call a fission reactor. reactor. It's like splitting the atom and not fusing atoms. And, and this, this fission, it, it creates power because it creates heat, but it also creates decay. And, and that's, that's the problem with it. But if we ever to f were to figure out how to do a fusion reactor in a nuclear submarine, you know, I got to share this with you guys. This is really cool. Do you know that a Navy submarine only needs to surface <laughs> to get food for the crew? That's it. A nuclear submarine is capable of remaining underwater indefinitely. 
There are systems aboard the submarine that produce clean water, produce clean air. The only thing that the submarine can't make is food. So the, the ship has to come up, it has to, has to surface periodically just to be replenished. Why is all of this important? Because this fission reactor is the same type of energy that was used in the first nuclear bomb in Hiroshima in 1945. This same energy is now sustainable for 20 years. Or your local nuclear power plant, same, same basic principle. It's producing energy over a long period of time because the energy is now harnessed to do something creative. It is because of nuclear power plants that we have the energy to produce some of the modern marvels of today. Likewise, if we're able to, to, to harness the fusion, to be able to uh, create sustainable fusion reactions, then basically we have the same energy as a star. Now watch this. They said that eventually our sun will run out of juice. Eventually. I don't know, 10 billion years from now? <laughs> you know, in other words, these stars are fusion reactors that last billions of years. We can either use the power that we have at our disposal to create or destroy. One of the things that it challenges me is that I think the reason why people don't often use the, they don't harness the power for good or for a, 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 a humanitarian enriching purpose is because of selfishness. And this goes back to everything, everything that I teach, it comes back to love. See, the thing is that when I love, when that is when I have empathy and compassion for humanity, that means I'm willing to create for the greater good. See, you could create something for your own benefit. See, the, when, when you create fire, <laughs> uh, it, it benefits the immediate recipients of the fire, you know, campfire. But if you are able to use that fire to light a boiler, now you could create heat that benefits many. We have to start looking at power through the lens of love. And, and this is really important because love is power. All matter, whether seen or unseen, whether in the quantum world or in the physical world, whether in the natural world or in the spiritual world, all power emanates from love. Now, for those of you who are into the Bible, it says that God is love. So in the beginning, when God created everything, what was God's raw material? He had nothing or she had nothing but herself. So that means that everything that was created, everything that can be seen, everything that can be observed, perceived, touched, felt, heard, tasted, it's made of love. And what happens is, that when we don't understand that we are love beings, that we are made of love, we're made by love, made to love, made of love, et cetera, et cetera. That's when we begin to take the power that we have and abuse it. That's when we begin to twist it, distort it, pervert it. That's when, when, we, when we try to change power 
And then you develop a mindset of lack, which this mindset of lack will in turn manifest into a mindset of hoarding. And then what, whatever power that you have, you use it to get what you can and hoard it. But if you understand that you are unlimited power being, that you have unlimited power at your disposal, that you will never run out of power, well, then that means it makes it a little easier now for you to take the power that you have to share it with others. That is exciting. When you can take what you have and use it for the greater good of humanity without any reservation, without any hesitation. Let me tell you something. That's when you know that you have power. When you are willing to project into the universe, into humanity, that which you have, your energy, your power, your dunamis. When you're able to share that, that's when you know that you've graduated beyond the mindset of finite. See, that's, I've said this before, that economics is literally the study of the allocation of scarce resources. That is the literal definition of economics. Now, if you start from that premise, the very premise says scarcity. Understand, and I've said this before, I'll say it again, that with about the same frequency that humans are born and die here on earth, more stars are being created. And where does all of this energy come from to create stars? Because watch this, when stars are being created, solar systems, planets, galaxies are being formed. And all of this is, is happening. There is just simply more than enough in the universe to create all of these things. See, there's a lesson to be learned in this because if you understand that there's more than enough matter, material, blessing, whatever you want to call it, in the universe to perpetually create stars on a fr almost secondly frequent basis, you understand that there's really no lack. And when we take our resources and we use them for the greater good, we are making an investment in humanity. And listen, the investments that you make in humanity have the greatest ROI. They have the greatest return on your investment. You will get back more from what you put into humanity than anything else. It's the, the, the wealthiest people in the world who have created the greatest inventions or, or uh, systems in the world that these people have put something into the universe that benefits humanity. But it gets distorted when we want to take it and, and hoard it. Nothing wrong with being wealthy. Nothing wrong with being rich. What's wrong is when you take that wealth and you don't use it for the betterment of humanity. See, I believe that the universe blesses us with this intellect, with this ability, with this desire to use power. Everybody, and I mean everybody, at some point wants to be recognized for who they are and their contribution to the world. Everybody wants to be thought well of. It, it gets twisted, though, when some people 
use the power to obtain infamy. See, you can you can be a gift to humanity, a lesson to humanity, or you can be a proverb to humanity. You could be something good that's done, some lesson that's valuable, or a how not to guide. All depending on how you wield this power that you already have. But let me back this up for just a second because in order for you to wield the power, you must first understand that you have it. And again, this is where I think religion plays the biggest mindfuck on humanity that has ever been done. Because religion teaches you that you are powerless. That you owe your life, your being, to the great sky god. And if you don't worship this great sky god and give him his due, then he will take from you. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. But energy is only given. It goes out. And it create it, it, it continues in, a, in an infinite loop, but it goes out. It goes forth. You never see light backing up. And people say, well, Derek, what about a mirror? That'll make light back up. No, it doesn't. It just changes the direction of the light. The light is still moving forward. In other words, light has no reverse gear light doesn't back up it's really interesting when you think about it because if you think about yourself as a light being then that means once you understand this your only directions as far as progress are forward and upward yeah you might Bend off to the left, or bend off to the right, maybe. But you're still moving forward. And that's, listen, you can take the power that you have. And this power can only be understood. It can only be manifest. It can only be fulfilled when you yourself understand that you are love. And and here's the other thing. This is why I say this. And I, I tell you people get mad when I say it. But I'm going to keep saying it until somebody gets it. <laughs> and if you don't, that's okay. You know, it, it, it may not be for everybody. But I believe that all of humanity, every single human being is God. I mean, big G God. And, and that if we begin to take this approach, then we begin to worship humanity and that means that worship means that we want to give of ourselves freely to humanity and that also means that we won't do anything to offend humanity and that also means that we want to make sure that humanity is appeased that it's taken care of and when you get that then and only then do you have power then you could take this power and apply it. And once this power is applied to the betterment of humanity, to the, to the good of all of humanity, not just yourself, it's okay if you benefit. I'm not saying that, that you should be just completely altruistic. No, you deserve to benefit from the power that you have. You just don't deserve to benefit benefit from it at the expense of others. You see how that works? That's 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 the key guys is that when we understand that we have this power but that we're not bent on using it to the detriment of others that we're not wickedly using the power that we have 
And we understand that. Game changes. And and here's the beautiful part. Because I'm all about seeing the demise of religion. And, and I don't care whether it's Christianity, Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism. I don't, I don't care. Listen, it, it, here's the thing. You can believe what you want. It, what, what you don't have the right to do is to tell others how to believe. And that's, that's the problem with, with many of the world's religions is that it, it, it becomes an activity in, uh, in proselytizing that you have to make converts or make disciples. The idea isn't to do that. The idea is you believe what you believe and you believe what works for you. But you don't have the right to impose that on somebody else. What, what, when you understand power, it takes away the need to prosecute your own agenda on others. That's what it does. So I want you to know that you have power you don't have to ask for power you don't have to wait for power you don't have to tarry for power you have it now the question is what will you do with it and it's not to hoard don't be a container be a conduit don't be a cup be a pipeline. And that, my friends, is what I have for you today. Be sure to check out this week's episode of the Heretic Happy Hour podcast, where we are doing a series on reconstruction. And my reconstruction happens to be in quantum spirituality. So I talk about things from a quantum level and a, the, relating the quantum to the spiritual. And it's a really great discussion. I hope that it encourages and edifies you. And also be sure to check out the Forward Podcast. I just uh, did a, uh, an interview with the awesome Rachel Beck. Uh, she's a, um, an influencer, um, a, um, a motivational speaker, and an author, and a very good friend of mine. And, and this interview will actually bless you. Uh, Rachel has a very unique perspective in that she is Indian, as in from India, and she's Jewish. And that is really, really an interesting and compelling story. Also, uh, now that this election thing is over, I think I'll get back to doing my blog, Love Minus Religion, which you can find on patheos.com. And uh, also um, check out my website, derekday.com. You can click the contact link and it, it give you a form that you can fill out. And it will send me an email. And if you send me an email, I promise to respond. Cool? Even if you like me or if you don't, doesn't matter. I'll send, I'll reply to your email. And, uh, and of course, you can hit me up on all the social media outlets. Uh, you know, I'm on um, Twitter and Instagram. My handle is Derek E. Day. That's D-E-R-R-I-C-K-E-D-A-Y. Um, and you can also um, hit me up at Derek Day Multimedia here on Facebook and um, yeah, I think that that's pretty much it. Oh, I'm on Parlay, too. <laughs> so uh, you, know, you want to check that out, too. Just in case you want to check that out, I'm there. I'm there. Uh, I'm not, I haven't really expanded my footprint there, but I'm there. <laughs> so uh, there was one other thing that I wanted to cover. Yeah. Oh, Friday. Don't forget to check out Freeology Friday, where I'm joined with my friend and brother, Aaron Tomlinson, and we just have a kick-ass time. We talk, we drink, and uh, and, and we basically uh, peel back the layers of bullshit <laughs> on spirituality, politics, and a bunch of other stuff. But we have a hell of a good time, and I encourage you to tune in and check that out. So until next time, peace and hair grease. Namaste. Love you and talk to you later.